church. A couple announcements before we go before the Lord in prayer. Uh, we still have two days left to get our prayer and fasting done. So pastor has asked that we take one day this week and we spend time in fervent prayer and fasting. Amen. So one day to join your church um, in prayer and fasting this week. And um, so we got Thursday and Friday. Let's come together as a church and let's uh, make sure we get a day of prayer and fasting in this week. Um, don't forget uh, Sunday morning, 11 a.m., Penn State campus, parking lot A. We will have church. That's 11 a.m. at Penn State, parking lot A. Uh, our next Tamaqua service is the last Sunday in September, so that's September 27th at 4 p.m. And so at 4 p.m. on the last Sunday of September, we're going to have parking lot service in Tamaqua. Amen. Uh, don't forget tomorrow evening, the youth call, 8.30. Encourage the youth to be on it. Um, encourage those of you know that are um, youth age to meet our youth pastor and his wife and the youth team. Amen. So that's at 8.30 uh, with Brother Brad, Sister Melissa, and the youth team. Amen. Uh, let's remember, um, uh, that's it for announcements. Let's go before the Lord in prayer. And uh, so remember Sister Alice's family, um, uh, Grace passed away. They have the, uh, the, the viewing and stuff this week. And so let's remember uh, Sister Alice's family this week and um, all those that, uh, all of uh, Grace's family since she's passed away. Let's remember the family, amen. Um, let's remember uh, Sister Dramas. They have multiple MIRs, MRIs scheduled uh, for her this coming week and next week. And so let's remember uh, Sister Dramas and uh, God move on her, heal her body, and uh, you know, let's 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 hear some good reports here, Sister Dramas. Amen. Um, and we remember the healing of our nation uh, for the many that have suffered from this COVID virus, and from those that have suffered from having the virus, to those that have lost jobs because of it, to those that are experiencing all the social ills and problems that are coming from this lockdown, and from people not being able to move around and stuff, people being stuck at home. Um, there, there's a lot of social issues along with the virus. And so we want to remember all of these needs, um, the children, the, the drug abuse, that we can overcome this, and that there is, um, you know, there, there's just a healing in our nation from this. Um, let's remember uh, uh, peace in the midst of so much unrest. We've got violence in cities, people calling for more violence. Um, and so let's remember uh, peace in our, in our country and a spiritual awakening. Amen. We, want, we need a spiritual awakening in this country. We need a revival. Pastor had a great message on revival on Sunday. If you weren't there for some reason, if you didn't get to hear Pastor, go back, watch it on YouTube. Um, it is a timely message about revival. Amen. And so we want to go before the Lord in prayer right now. Lord, we come before you, Lord. Lord, each and every one of us lifting up names, Lord God, of those that we know that need touched by you, Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Lord, we need you to move, Lord. Touch Sister Alice's family, Lord God. Lord, be with us today, Lord God. Touch her, heal her body, Lord. Sister Doremus, Lord, be with her, God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Lord, we love you and we praise you. Lord, we need you to heal our nation, God. Reach down, touch this COVID virus, the unrest. Bring a spiritual awakening, Lord God, to our country, a revival, Lord God. Lord, this is what we need, God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Lord, we need you to move and draw men, Lord God. Let there be labors in the field. Lord, we come before you right now with our church prayer. Lord, reach down, grow our church. Save these cities. Mature your people. Bless and increase our finances. Give us a bigger and better building. And Lord, we're praying for laborers in the field. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. God bless you, church. Praise the Lord, church. God bless you. Uh, again, before the pastor gets started, there's something I want to do that means so much to me. And um, I want to say thank you, Brother Brad, Brother Ron, Brother Bond, Sister Pat. Thank you guys. Thank you all so much. And those of you that work the parking lot, and those of you that help set up and help take down, and those, those of you that go with Brother Brad and Sister Melissa when they go by the church to um, unload the equipment from their vehicle, all of this is a part of everything being as such a success. And, um, and, uh, and Brother Brad sometimes puts in so much hours and with uh, the speakers and going there and making sure the equipment is right. This is kingdom work. And I, I'm just thankful that our church is a people that, you know, has an honor for kingdom work. Bible study students, those of you that check on people, that call and encourage others. This is so vital. This is part of kingdom work in Christianity. Amen.
Pastor and Sister Dramus and I, we love you and thank you so much for everything. Praise God. Um, I, I also want to remind you that uh, of our parking lot service, and um, and I know I don't want to be redundant. I don't want to uh, I don't want to bore you with this. This is so important that you uh, you invite people to come. Sister Patty Ann had a first time visitor at the parking lot service. Uh, I'm sorry, but I haven't tagged in with her to see how it went with that young man. And uh, But the young lady that um, came as a visitor to our Tamaqua service, we're going to have our second Bible study with her tonight, the Lord willing. I'm just, I'm just so excited about what, the, what God is doing. I want to remind you, um, your, uh, your hands are anointed. The words of your mouth is anointed. I'm praying that God puts people in our path, that we are able to connect with people and be anointed for them and, and be a part of this incredible kingdom of God. Praise God. From my house to yours, I'm doing it from my home tonight, and uh, I am excited. This is not going to be a real long one, but it's going to be very vitally important. So if you, if you have your Bibles, if you'll get your Bibles uh, together, God bless everybody in your home. God bless our children, our young people. And um, I, I want everybody to come together and let's have church. Praise God. Afterwards, be sure to pray and, uh, and to talk with one another. Ask If there's questions that anybody in your home have, uh, let them ask you. If you don't have the answer, give pastor a call. Give me a text. Give me a little while and I'll get back with you. And uh, we just thank God for the kingdom for such a time as this. Amen. If you have your Bibles, turn with me to the book of Romans, uh, the 15th chapter and the 7th verse, verse, Romans 15 and 7. Wherefore, receive ye one another, as Christ also received us to the glory of God. Receive ye one another, also as Christ received us to the glory the glory of God. I want to talk to you about accepting others. Amen. Everybody say it, accepting others. Uh, Paul Tournier was a brilliant thinker, and he was a brilliant writer. He was an influential Christian therapist during his time. Doctors around the world traveled to his home in Switzerland to learn from him. It, it's even recorded that students would would come and sit and and uh, and take uh, lessons from him and go around with him, how he handled people, how he handled people in his therapy uh, sessions, and and uh, it, he said it was a little embarrassing for students to come over and to study his techniques because they would leave and with the understanding that the truth is that the uniqueness was all about the way he accepted others was how he did it. That he would accept people as they are, not trying to make them something he wanted them to be at first, but he was accepting them as they are. In, in the Bible, in, in Romans 12 and 2, it says, Be kindly affectioned one to another with brotherly love in honor preferring one another in other words be devoted to one another in brotherly love honor one another above yourselves this is the point now stay with me here accepting is not the same as approving condoning bad behavior just because we accept somebody and they've got some bad behavior they got some pretty hideous sins or they're this or that it's not okay and condoning and approving it's accepting them at where they are and who they are acceptance is an act of the heart in which we recognize that despite someone's behavior he or she has value in god's sight as a person value in god's sight as a person and listen we honor that. They have value in God's sight. No matter how good or bad, no matter what this person accepting them, whether there's challenges between you and them, accepting them is a honor because they have value with God. 
But this can be a hard thing to do. I get it. I know. There are many ways, many ways to communicate acceptance to people. I'm going to talk about some of it. One of them is to listen to them with patience. Listen with patience and compassion. That's a big word right there. We need to talk about that word some more. We need to get it out there and look at it and feel it. Because I think sometimes if we're not careful, we are, uh, the, the longer some people stay a Christian, be are a Christian, the less compassionate they become. The less prayerful, the less worship they do, the less involved in w reaching and winning other people, the less compassion. That doesn't need to be. That's not the will of God. It should never be. One of the great ways to accept someone is to listen to them and listen to them with patience and compassion and receive them with love in the name of Jesus. And, uh, and hear me, it's going to be hard to do in the, one of the only ways that some people can, can deal with other people and accept them is in the name of Jesus. Another is to reframe from mental condemnation and judgments. To refrain from that. Don't go there. Don't get into that. From constantly evaluating and analyzing people. Listen, you, when you talk to somebody and, and while you're talking to them, you don't need to be analyzing them. You don't need to be evaluating them. That's not what you need to be doing. You need to be concentrating on listening. Be, be a part. Be patient in listening and be compassionate. Learn to do that. Put, a, put this in as something that you work on, that you become a part of, and that you pay attention. I can't tell you, um, there's been a few times with working with Brother Brad and what an incredible leader he, he has become. And, and our, our leadership, our, our roundtable counselors, I've, I've told all of them, one of, the, one of the most important things is when you're talking to somebody is be 100% right there. Listen. Stay with it. There's times when I'm talking to, to somebody, I'll pull over because I, I don't want to miss a word with one letter, two letters. I don't want to miss anything because I know this is an important conversation and they deserve me to listen. And this is important that we do this. We don't need to evaluate people in a conversation. We don't need to analyze them. We need to have a conversation and accept them as who they are, where they're at, and go from there. We must never speak out loud and think too seriously of those things that keeps us from loving and caring for others. These things that people go through that they mark somebody. They, um, in a conversation, something happens and, and, they are, and this other, these other people are marked and it's never, ever taken away. Be careful you do that. Do not do that. That's not accepting others. We must take, uh, we must take captive. I'm going to say it like that. We must take captive those thoughts that condemnation toward others and submit them. This is, you know, when you're having problems with connecting with somebody, you're having problems with uh, caring for them and having compassion in a conversation, you're having problems accepting somebody. Go to the Lord in prayer. I can tell you right now, God's not going to tell you to walk away. He'll tell you how to handle it. And, of course, you've always got your pastor. And um, I'm, I'm a people person. I love the people I pastor. And I want you to love people that we're all working with together. God knows how to put a, a church team together. And he's putting us together. I want to talk to you about ways of accepting people. I want, I want to share this with you. Ways of accepting people and being nice. Woohoo! There's that word. There's that little phrase. Number one, acknowledge people. You see, if acknowledge them when you're when people are passing by and you're seeing, you know, you see people acknowledge them. And you, um, I'm not saying take yourself away from another conversation. I'm not saying um, ignore somebody you're talking to and give everybody that comes by an an acknowledgement. No, I'm talking about when when people are. Let's say you're reading, you're on your phone, somebody comes by, look up and say, hey, or just nod. And don't, don't ignore people. Acknowledge them and be nice. Don't be afraid to start a conversation. 
This is accepting others. Do not be afraid to start a conversation. And again, another one, don't blow people off. You don't mind me saying it like that. I, you'll get the picture here real plain. Don't blow, don't blow people off and be careful with your body language. Roll in your eyes. People see that. People look back and see you and, and you're rolling your head, rolling your eyes. Don't be that kind of person. Oh, for Christ's sake, don't do that. Jesus' name. Let's, let's do what we do unto the Lord. Let's, let's, and let's do unto, uh, unto God. And don't uh, be careful that you don't blow people off and, and that you be careful with your body language. It's important. Be genuine. Here's some ways to accept in people. Be genuine and make people comfortable in your presence. You know, there are people that really believe if you make people uncomfortable and, and, and uh, if you can do that, that makes you a great leader. What? Make you a great what? A great leader? Nah. Mm -mm. That's a joke. Everybody say Remember. Everybody, everybody, and that is everybody I'm talking about, is similar. You, you want to get this. Everybody is similar. We all have similarness about ourselves. We are all created in the image of God. Every one of us is similar, and we're created in the image of God. This is important. We are all created in the image of God. We're similar. Everybody is unique. Each of us are one of a kind. We're unique and each one of us are one of a kind. That means different from you and me. Everybody is different from you and me and different in different ways. Everybody's unique. Everybody's one of a kind. We're all different in different ways. It's just a little short lesson I have for you tonight. I prayed in the Holy Ghost what God would have me to bring to you. And I want you to listen again to some verses that I brought to you. Be devoted to one another. Be devoted to your brother in love, your sister in love. Honor one another above yourselves. People you've never met before, give them some time and make them comfortable in your presence, especially the brother and sister that you go to church with. Wherefore, receive one another as Christ also received us to the glory of God. Whew. That's, that's being nice. That's just being good people. That's just being a good Christian. That's just accepting one another. In, this, in these crazy times, in the end time, here we are in the end time, and can you imagine the more uncomfortable some people make others, that's what they think that makes the best leader. Wrong. Imagine somebody that makes people, everybody uncomfortable, that looks down their nose at other people. They think that's a good leader, a good pastor. Accepting others is, is important. It's, in, it's, it's imperative. And I want to remind you again, in Jesus' name, your hands are anointed. The words of your mouth is anointed. Why God would God anoint our hands and our mouth to be hard to be, to, to be hard to approach, to be hard to have a conversation with? Be picky about who you allow gets close to you. I want everybody. I want you. I want everybody to be able to get close to me. And God, somebody say God, God anoint you that you can draw other people to him with your goodness your acceptance and your niceness just be nice to people god bless you sister dreamers and i love you i hope this little lesson little short lesson does something good for you i hope it you benefit from it we we got to grow a church we got to reach a world we've got to get a hold of god for for the world's sake God did not tell this world if you would pray and seek my face. I'm, I'm kind of at the point, the feeling that, hey, this is not the world's fault. This is not politicians' fault. He told the church, if my people 
which are called by my name will humble themselves. What is, what? I think that's our problem. We're not humble. I, I want to be. I intend to be. And I want to help you to be. I'm trying to help you. I'm trying to help you. Father, we love you. We thank you. Oh, I feel your presence, oh, mighty, wonderful God. I feel your presence. And I'm asking you, God, to help us to be a help to others and to be a benefit, to be a ministry and a minister, to be accepting others and to be nice. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Y'all have a wonderful, wonderful end of the service. Talk about this. Pray. Sing some songs. See you next time. Bye-bye.